you accept lah. Keep, la. You're keep like, on okay, commenting. You like no, you mm. continue because the more you comment, the more the algorithm push <laughs> my video up anyway. Because the fucking comment section cannot differentiate which one is hate comment, which one is good comment, <laughs> what? Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Azula. And today we have a very familiar face right here. Um, I'm Zula's number one fan. Indeed, number one. I've been Actually, watching since 2015. Way before I even stepped into this office, you were already here. If you go and search my name on YouTube, I'm pretty certain Zula chick chats will pop out. Wow, that is like damn long ago. I I was I had blonde hair. So this is Nicole Lyle and Lyle. <laughs> I've been asking her from the start like I've been telling her Lyle <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Lyle Nicole Nicole Lyle I'm 25 this year 20, 23, 25 And um, what I do, I am a TikToker I own a lash business And I basically just create content And how long have you been doing content then? I think since so like long. 2020 2020 Okay, I do want to say that you are kind of in the age where the moment social media became a hype, right? You were the age group to use it already. So you kind of grew up and you matured with the platforms. Like, I, I am not native to social media because, for example, Instagram all, right? I last time, I didn't even know it was a social media app. I thought it was a photo editing app. But, like, I did grow up with TikTok, lah. Mm. Yeah, like, and I think I used TikTok the most heavily, like, when I was in my house, start my house in, pand in the pandemic. And that's where my TikTok career really began. Right. Well, you were saying that you launched your social media career during the pandemic and you were a TikTok uh, star during the pandemic I never time. say TikTok star. I, TikTok <laughs> I say one. Cannot lah. Later TikTok people star. say I'm not humble though. Okay, pandemic TikToker. How did that even start? What do you start posting and how do you get traction? I was, I was bored. I was just then bored. Like, I remember like, I was like, okay, like, I got nothing to do. So I was like, okay. I had this idea in my brain, but I just mm. never did it because like, you know sometimes when you overthink, you're like, oh, is this a good idea or not? Yeah. But I think I like TikTok because it's very forgiving. You can just come posting and posting even if it's not good. So I was like, okay, what if I do like, what does your pencil case say about you? If you own a Muji pencil case, you're a basic, basic asshole and your notes look pristine but your grades are shit! Like something like ast astrology vibe but I think because okay. everyone was collectively so bored at home right then those mm -hmm. videos popped off like crazy mm -hmm. like literally exiting circuit breaker like I got a decent sized following on TikTok already and which video made you realize that this could be a career? Bro, at that point like, you really can't you really don't think it's gonna be a career because mm. no brands were hopping onto TikTok yet. Right. There was no one video that was like, oh I it can be a career, but it was more like, oh wow, got people want to watch la then okay, okay la I continue doing but they okay. went all for free, like it's out of my yeah. goodwill to the society. <laughs> your time, and, yeah. You can donate time. I was like with another company previously also la so it was like Possibly just side hustle there and then main hustle is my lash business so. Mm. Yeah, so I really didn't think that like whatever would transcend moving forward would happen. I guess there must be a few moments where certain videos really caught people's attention and people knew you for these videos. What are those iconic ones then? Now our thing is like like more iconic like segments. Oh my god, last time I used to pretend to be Sir Stanford Raffles also, you know? <laughs> then there was my Ama era also. It was more of like different eras of like, like me acting and yeah it. like okay. more like comedic skits it slowly transitioned to like i can be myself on camera and people will still watch uh, that kind of thing mm. i know there's some also i mean it's also related to your boyfriend like uh your bto one the ndp and the bto one. that one is not my tiktok that one is like national tv okay so what happened on national tv me and my friends we were just attending ndp like regular singaporean citizens okay yeah. then after that like we just chilling waiting for ndp to start then after that like someone came up came up to us and he was like um are you comfortable being on camera are you down to like be interviewed then we were like uh, okay lah then after that he was like okay so basically like this segment they're gonna ask you like what you're grateful for then you you see this hardship you write down what you're grateful for on the hardship then after that like um, when they ask you just say okay. then I just brainstorming them hard because I like what am I grateful for about Singapore then I like wow I tried my BTO so many times then finally I got a queue number and like it can mm. pick the flat one so I was like okay lah I'm grateful for my HGB like BTO queue number then I just say oh, it takes like one two seconds for the speaker to say back to yeah. the entire crowd so yeah. when I say that time like zero reaction from people so I was like oh shit the, the answer very lame I'm very grateful for So I was like, oh my god, no one is like vibing with this answer. Everyone thinks it's shit. So then after that, I went like, woo! 
So it's really just me giving to my intrusive thoughts and I didn't think much of it. And I let me just tell you all, uh, on the fucking platform, don't have Wi-Fi, no. So only once in a while, oh. I get people WhatsApping me. Only WhatsApp can connect to Wi-Fi. Then like, like WhatsApp will be like, hey, you on the NDP thing now? I was like, yeah, ha, ha, ha. Then that's it. I come out of fucking floating platform. I enter Marina Bay Sands, right? I connect to the Wi-Fi. Suddenly, right, I see on like Instagram, on TikTok, everything all blowing up. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Then like, like I had people like messaging me like, this is stage, right? Because like people are saying that it's stage. Da, 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 like you're sponsored by Yakun la. You're sponsored by um government. It was a government plant. Oh, okay. Um, hi government. If you want, we can do this again. I don't know whether it's gonna be posted before or after NDP, but like I am willing to do it again for a large sum of money. So yeah. Maybe they will. Sponsor your BTO. After the whole thing, right? I did work with MND for like a couple of campaigns. Ah, they so really did see you there. But it's not on purpose. I sumpa. What this about the BTO video? Did you do any other videos after that? Oh my god, that was a sponsored video, you know. Just so happened like you got watch was working with um a government like agency to to promote like if I'm not wrong, it's the changes in the BTO policy. So they okay. wanted us to like get on them and then like talk about it. Talk about the changes, the policy changes. Yeah, because I was on it also, right? Then they told me to make a TikTok to like promote the video and you got buy house before also right so you know you must yeah. give a cashless order right yeah i didn't know what the fuck a cashless order was eh then the handbook also never put big big it must bring cashless order then i like what fuck is cashless order i find like um the day of paying for my hdb flat down payment right like that morning the 2 a.m i see the online forum i like fuck lah got cashless order then i check my debit card my limit is only i can transfer six thousand dollars okay then i only can withdraw three thousand dollars and i cannot change because i just changed phone so you know like your posb dg yeah the dg pin or security is a whole shit show and it was on a sunday so all the banks were closed so we cannot withdraw money like physically cannot go to the bank teller and beg like everything was just like all over the place so we're like what to do now leah can attest to this i had to call Oh, Leah, Leah Shannon, Mischief Magic. Hi, can transfer $9,000 to me now. She had to transfer $9,000 to either my boyfriend or me so okay. that I can put it into my CPF account. And then like my friend had to transfer another $10,000 or $8,000 to me to put in my CPF account so we could wipe it all out. And then after that, pay via cash. After that, we give the lady already. Right? She's like, okay, now we have to bring you to the machine. Then it's really like vending machine vibes. You really must slowly slot. So imagine slotting 6k worth of cash. Then I post it online because like, I, th I thought that was a stupid thing to do. Like, you don't, you must be prepared. My, my takeaway message was be prepared. And now now people be like, oh, are you the BTO girl? Like, yes, mm. it's me. I'm not pissed or mad that like there's yeah. that relation. I love Singapore with oh. all my heart. Every time I go overseas, I'm just like, Singapore is so much more efficient. Mm. We're going to talk about a time that you actually went overseas for something. Oh, mm. um, I was in mental breakdown era, so I went overseas. And mm. then after that, I got plastic surgery. But I didn't do my nose or anything, blah, blah, blah. I just like got like this thing called V line fox shaping face whatever the fuck but like essentially is like i got all my double chin lipo out of my chin oh okay because i normally get jaw botox anyway so i was like okay you just remove as much fats as possible okay. here so what does the botox do okay so botox like weakens your muscles so if mm. you have like very you know like some people are very prominent like masseter muscles like their jawline they're mm. this part very pop like mm. it pops a lot right so if you get botox here it makes it less obvious okay. so yeah normally people get botox here and they get botox for their like frown lines for prevention lah so when you like lift up you don't activate a lot of those muscles then ah. you don't get the lines very fast i did remove like some fat here also so it's like not as prominent so when the muscle comes back it doesn't like protrude as much also yeah then i got my buckle fat partially removed oh yeah, yeah. i did a facelift also like a mini one so they slice like a portion of my scalp out then they like shoop it up like that do you feel like this perspective of yourself like the self-perception was fully developed because you were constantly looking at your face on your phone yeah i think i think that like it stemmed from being on social media and my job if i wasn't an influencer tiktoker content creator right i don't think i would have done it mm. if i were to not be the one controlling that the camera angles, mm. so right? Then, like, if I were to see the edits, I can see, like, I don't look good in this, 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 this and angle. Like that. Obviously, who would like if they look like shit? Uh? Mm. Confirm don't like one, why? But it's like... But, okay, you see, right? You say look like shit, but look like shit is subjective, why? Yeah, it's right? to me. But mm. things like, that's all that matters, why? Whether mm. I feel like I look nice or not. Because I see how hot I can look from some angles. I'm like, I can look so slay. Yes, yes, even... I know that now, uh, there's some angles that I don't look slay in. It's just life. <laughs> but at least, like majority of it is slayer than it used to be. The good thing about this whole thing, I feel, is that I wasn't comparing myself to anyone. Like, I wasn't like, I you want to look like someone. Yeah, I want to achieve this. So, after finishing all mm. of that, right, I felt very contented. Like, mm. I didn't feel I want to do more now. Mm. That I am genuinely like, 
slay. And how did people react when they found out? Oh my god, my mom, my mom found out whilst I was there. How? She was like, because I posted on TikTok. Like. Yeah, then she was like, oh my god, what the fuck? You went overseas to do plastic surgery, why didn't oh you tell no. me? But then after that, when I came back, she was like, oh yeah, nice. Okay. Then, at least she said that. Yeah. Right? Like my boyfriend was like, yeah, babe, I'm supportive. In my third week there, he came to like accompany me for a while. Then he was like, oh, babe, I feel like you're suffering. Because I had to wear like the the head thing. And also I had to like sit upright and sleep. So I had to sleep like that. Because like... They for do- three weeks? For like the whole time I was there, I sat up and sleep. How do you do that? You just prop all the pillows up oh and sit God. up. And then he's like, Oh, babe, I feel like my heart aches for you. I'm oh, like, so fuck shit. off. Hey. I will look so hot after this. <laughs> it's just temporary suffering. It's fine. So how did people in the comments and your followers and audiences react? Actually, people were very supportive. And like, huh? um, I think because I shared so openly about it and I... About went, what? The uh, surgery? Yeah, the surgery, mm. the process and also like why, my reasons for mm-hmm. it also, right? So I had a lot of people like DMing me, asking me like how it was. Because of how vulnerable I was online, people are comfortable like approaching me about yeah, it also. Yeah, 100% yeah. It kind of makes like what I'm doing worthwhile also, you know? Because like, I kept talking to this phone screen and shit. I don't even know who the fuck's watching. But then like, when I can put faces to the people that are watching, it's very like heartwarming also. Yeah. And I think it's good so because like I think in Singapore this topic is very taboo and not a lot of people go for it. But I know a lot of like influencers that have done things but they just don't say on it, mm. you know. They have every mm. right to keep quiet about it mm. because I feel like Singapore is very very critical, very insensitive. Like for example, now when you find out this girl has gotten her eyelids done before, right? When you say, Oh, this girl's pretty, then someone will be like, Oh no, it's because she got plastic surgery. And you don't want to be tied to that. I feel comfortable being mm. okay to say it. So I was like, mm. okay, la, just say it. And then like whatever happens, happens. Mm. And I'm very thankful that majority of people are very nice. But there are still chibis in the comments that'll yeah. be like, hey, you look the same, la, look worse. Right, la. Right. It's my face and I feel like I look fucking slay. So yeah. That's good enough. You did say that uh, you decided on plastic surgery because you felt like you were looking at yourself every day. You didn't feel good about it. Mm. Did, that, did that affect uh, your mental health? Uh, no, not really. I feel like my mental health has always been at an all-time low. It's just that I've been like coping. Just a one fuck up away from a mental breakdown. Like right now also. Yeah. Like I feel like I'm just mm. a very high functioning sad person but it's not obvious on mm-hmm. camera. You know you talk to people in the industry mm. right and you realise the, the more like chill and like the more people that are like they take life with a pinch of salt more funny and like mm-hmm. hee ha with life right. They actually are the ones that are like they have quite a lot of like things going on behind the scenes, you know, that kind of vibes. And I feel, I feel like, like that goes with people in general, not even just in the industry. Mm, yeah. I'm fine, like, I guys, I'm fine. But it's just that, like, sometimes I have my moments of, like, cannot wake up at all sadness. I compartmentalise and then I just leave it there and, like, mm. let it collect dust. Mm. Like, trauma and shit. Mm. And then, when the situation arises, then that that thing that I thought that I was over, it comes up and like it projects in like, oh. for example, my relationships or yeah. like, like the way I handle things, yeah. you know? A lot of times when we go through certain experiences in our life that are particularly dark or that give us stronger stress, right? They are memories that are stored away in a special place in our minds and they, if not processed properly, yeah. will constantly be revisiting us in our day-to-day. One thing that I think has always been like, submerged deep down in my feels right it's like my feelings towards like my family and stuff because my parents had like you know the big boss fight of like when they're gonna divorce that one ginormous fight mm. but then they didn't officially divorce until mm. 2021 20, 2022 so it's like my whole life since like early secondary school all the way until almost graduating uni then they finally divorced so ah, okay. that's all I saw like love to me was like that and then because my parents were both like like two people that don't want to be together still still living together Forcing and themselves yeah. to be together. So like they have already so much baggage on their like on their plate, right? Mm. And then now they have to raise kids on top of it. For a large part of my life, like I had to raise myself and my sister. So I think I subconsciously took on like the dead role. Like I must be the sole provider. I must earn money to pay for my sister and mm. stuff like that. I think a lot of that snowball and I internalized it and like it didn't come out until I think maybe recently because now I'm like out of like the schooling life and now adult adult right so like I can see how it's manifesting because for example I'm so terrified to run out of money Mm. because I've seen how when like for example my dad decides to cut my mom off right our income just dipped significantly and then it went from going out to like restaurants I think middle-ish class family kind of vibes to like 
we legit eat fish bone, you know, like my mother will buy the fish bone from mm. the NTUC and then like, you eat, we eat is the in between the bone, right? The mm. meat. Like when was thing. this? And I think my whole of like, like upper primary, I mean upper sec all the way until JC. Because your parents were like split up or? No, they were like, they're still living together but mm. things my dad don't want to pay for a lot of shit already. Ah. Then my mom cannot earn, her, like her earning power not as much already because okay. she had to focus on her mental health. Did you have a relationship with your father? Nah man, we don't want to talk. But I, I mean, one day I want to reconnect but I mm. think I know in my heart I'm not at the right hit space too mm-hmm. now lah. Okay, so how this now like trauma has like revisited my life, come knocking at the door. It's like, I very scared to run out of money, right? So mm. I will work and work and work and work and work. Every way I can work, I will work like sell. Mm. And it's to the point where I will come to burn out. You know like, cause creatively when you do it, like your scripting and like your storyboarding, like you need to be in this hit space where you are able to take on creative work. When you feel like it becomes too much of a chore, mm. like your brain just cannot like shoot out ideas anymore and that kind of thing. And I want as much as possible every sponsor ad I do, every like, paid collaboration to be in as interesting enough for like someone that is like so, someone like me that is like skeptical about a uh, sponsor ad right to be able to sit through it and be like oh my god even though it's a sponsor ad like I feel like mm-hmm. I at least gain some knowledge yeah. out of it you know that kind of thing yeah. yeah I've been doing this for three years but I still feel like that's the most important thing because this is my job my so the sole reason why I'm still here and like still able to do all these TikToks is because people are watching and people care. Yeah. So I need to respect the fact that they care also and I cannot just half ass everything that I put out just because of money, yeah. you know. I think you need to make sure that whatever you put out is still of quality. Yeah. And that's that pressure, right? When it comes yeah. to delivering good work. Yeah, so so when that pressure comes to play and yeah. then like me sometimes just taking on so much just because I'm so scared to not take on this much, right? Like there will come a time where I'll just like, I cannot. It's good to pace yourself also. I really understand what you mean because it's a very survival mentality where you are trying to scavenge for every last job you could possibly get or every opportunity that comes your way because you don't know when the next one comes. Yeah. And that is very much the how a freelance life is like. I feel like I'm a squirrel, you know, then like, I like this hibernation is like looming. Then I must like collect all my yeah, nuts. as much as possible. Yeah. So for me, right, it's like I'm very like I want to take as much control as possible mm. over my work and what I put out. Yeah. But then I'm like, okay, actually I don't have to do this. Yeah. I can outsource it to someone. Like so, for example, like I have my dearest producer with me now, where like I can tell her an idea and she can help me flesh it out. So I'm not ah. the one sitting in front of it and doing. You know. That's very good. Yeah. Yeah. So at least it takes off that burden from mm. me. I realize when I start letting go, I also can have spend more time doing more organic stuff on top of the paid stuff. What helps you open up and share about your mental state, your trauma and well, different experiences in your life online? Uh, I don't know because I'm bored. The fuck? <laughs> I just really no thought process behind it. Like, uh, yeah, another, rain, another series of your intrusive thoughts. Yeah, right? what I want to be in the media space, right? I always think, I must like remind myself like is who I would want to watch growing up. A lot of people talk about mental health and stuff like that, but mm. when you want to share, right, you only dare to share this much. Mm. It's very hard for you to be fully vulnerable and it's really because being a creator, when you put yourself out there, you say all these vulnerable things, right? If the haters hear this, right, they will take whatever vulnerable things you serve to them on a platter, take back and then put back in the like, comment section for mm. you. Right? That's why I really understand when people don't want to share and mm. don't want to open up. But like, personally for me, because I feel like I don't care, but I feel like a lot of people, like they're watching are feeling this way but mm. they don't know whether everyone else feels this way mm. and like if it can reach one person and it makes one person feel like you're not alone then okay lah slay so how do you feel about crappy commenters then <laughs> you ever cross your mind to go and create an anonymous tiktok account and then go and comment hate comments on people you know there are people like that yeah. no no have, has it ever crossed your mind to like someone that you don't like of like, course not lah for you to be in the hate space to go and think about doing this and go through with it sign up for TikTok user 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, and comment like it's like definitely projection but the person is like next level psycho already so yeah. I'm okay with it like you accept lah you're like okay commenting. you are like this no you mm. continue because the more you comment the more the algorithm push <laughs> my video up anyway because the fucking comment section cannot differentiate which one is hate comment which one is good comment or what being a creator online has really helped to I guess grow the early 20s of your life and develop you as a person mm. and you've grown so much on the platform also what's the biggest takeaway you have? 
I would say my what I've learned going through this space, right? It's time and place. Don't be an idiot. Yes, I want to be unfiltered, but I also must think first before I post. Mm. Okay, if you ever somehow land yourself in like the influencer space or whatever, be nice to the people that like like message you, DM you or whatever, because like these are people that really without them, right, you don't have a fucking job man. Yeah, so slay. Stay positive. Stay, Stay slaying. <laughs> yeah. All right, la. That's a very nice place to wrap up. Thank you so much, Nicole. No problem. All right. So thank you all for watching this episode of Ask Zula. Let us know in the comment section who you want us to talk to next. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Bye.